Hello, my friend. Um, I got a question for you. What's keeping you from God? I mean, you might be an earnest Christian. A person goes to church all the time, reads your Bible, but we all go through these periods where we feel isolated from God. We, we have a hard time feeling Him. What is that block that's keeping us from God? Or maybe you're watching this and you are just starting your relationship with God and you're unsure how to get close to Him. Or maybe you don't have a relationship with God. You're exploring this. Wherever you're at in that whole spectrum, this idea that sometimes it's hard to feel God, to know God, to be with God, well, I want to tell you, it's common. It's, it's, it's ever since the Garden of Eden. So Adam and Eve, they're in the garden, they bite the fruit, they go hide, they realize they're naked, they hear God walking in the garden, and man, they're like, get, get under this bush, quick. Here's God's response to their separation and sin. He says this in Genesis 3, 9, but the Lord God called to the man, where are you? There's a lot of ways to look at the Old Testament, by the way. Um, you can look at it in terms of the promises God makes. He makes a lot of promises. To Eve, he says, the serpent will uh, have his head crushed by your descendant. To Abraham, he says, I'll make you into a mighty nation that will produce a Messiah. To David, he says, your throne will last forever and ever. And all these promises, all these different characters get promises. And all the promises are just one promise. Jesus will come and end the separation. Another way to look at the Old Testament is through the story of families. It starts off with Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. Then it goes to Noah, Abraham, Ruth. Every one of those families is dealing with separation, not just with God, but with each other, conflict and dysfunction with each other. Or another way to look at the Old Testament is through the idea of separation. From Genesis, where a man goes and hides from God, all the way to the New Testament all the way to Easter, all the way to the cross, where Jesus ends the separation. I mean, think about this. Moses is leading the people in the promised land. Why? Because they're separate from their promised land. They gotta cross over and get to the promised land. David is trying to unite the kingdoms together into one kingdom. Why? Because they're separate from each other. What happens after David and his son uh, uh, rule? Well, there's a civil war and they separate again. The whole thing is about separation until this verse, this verse right here. This is Matthew 27, 51. This is the essential effect of Easter. Here it is. At that moment, the moment Jesus paid the price for our sins, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split. My friend, we were separated by sin in the garden and Jesus came and died in our place. And the very first thing that happened when he paid for the price of our sin is the Holy of Holies the place where God's presence had been for generations, that door, that curtain, that separation was ripped in two. My friend, there is no separation between you and God now. There is not a single obstacle between you and your Creator. How close are you to God? Well, you're as close as you want to be. You're as close as you will pursue to be. The Bible says this, if we'll draw close to God, he'll draw close to us. Don't let that feeling of isolation or separation or you're not worthy keep you from getting to God because Jesus has already cleared the way.